Model Making Guru is sponsored by eModels.co.uk, your one-stop shop for all your model making needs. eModels.co.uk, make something awesome. Right, this is take six of the introduction now. I need more coffee. Oh. Hey everybody, it's Fox from Model Making Guru here. Hello, hello, welcome to part seven. Seven of our build of Italeri's 124th scale Mark II Transit Van, uh, knackered old tranny edition for emodels.co.uk, my very good friends and sponsors. Now, you'll know in the last episode, we got pretty much the van done. A couple of last little bits that we will need to do on that. Put the mirrors on the sides, the wipers, I've got to do something with the windscreen. Uh, and put the last tire on. Uh, so we're gonna do that towards the end of the episode. This will be the final episode uh, because there's only really one thing for us left to do apart from the little bits on the van and that is to build a diorama. Now, what I'm gonna do in this episode is I'm not gonna do the usual get a piece of wood and some clay and some landscape and foam and trees and all oh, bushes and bits of water and land, you know, animals and plants and lions and tigers and bears. Oh my, no, I'm not gonna do that. What I'm going to do is show you a completely different way of doing a drama, a drama, a drama, drama, drama. Oh, I've not got my teeth in. Diorama, um, which is more of a, you, one of your friends in your local modeling club says, hey, can you bring a model to the show? Because we need some models on the table that we're going to have there. And you go, that's great, but it's just a model. There's no diorama. And also the show is in four days time. <coughs> and if you just put your model on the table, it looks a bit pants much nicer if it's got a setting to make it stand out you haven't got time to build a super duper complicated diorama what you do have time to do is build a quick fix diorama and this is what i'm going to show you how to do it's uh, dead cheap dead quick requires no skill uh, and you can get all the stuff you need save two items from e-models what we're going to use we are going to use first of all a cheap picture frame this is a a5 picture frame cost me about four quid from a website named after a large river um, i went to all my local picture frame shops and stationery shops and things like that and every time you walk in and say have you got any a5 picture frames they look at you like you've just crawled out of the sewers Meh. so i'm like yeah, i'll just go online so i got myself a little cheap a5 picture frame it's metal doesn't matter it doesn't matter really this was like four quid so it's like the cheapest one i could find doesn't matter if it's metal or wood or black or white or green or pink or whatever you can paint it if you need to uh, so that's going to be the basis for our diorama. Now the reason I wanted an A5 one, if I can find somewhere to put that picture frame, was because what I got from eModels uh, was this. It is uh, one of the coastal diorama boards. It's basically, uh, it's not it's not foam board, but it's very similar. It's foam with thick shiny paper on the top and it has um, photographs of terrain on it. Whether it's a photograph of real terrain or a photograph of a model, I don't know. Or, you know, combined together. And they do loads of different ones. They've got runway strips, bits of dirt, dust, desert, things like that. They're just flat and printed. It's like the kind of signs you get for outside houses for sale. It's that kind of idea, foam with plastic over the top. They're really high quality, really nicely printed, and they're a real quick way of doing a diorama. Now you could just get one of these and say, right, there you go. It looks better than just sitting on a bare table. Yeah, we that's fine but we can make it a little bit better so this is a5 size i measure i've got the measurements and it just happens to be exactly the right size so that's why i got the a5 picture frame so we need that that's going to be our base uh we only need a couple of other little bits we need uh this or i'm going to use this is uh ammo by mig small brush autumn or small brushes as they say i love ammo's slightly wonky english it's basically a sheet of grasses and bushes like you get the little ones of grass tufts this is a whole sheet of just tufty mossy grass and we're going to cut this to shape so that's going to go kind of here uh, we have two packs of leaves oak decaying leaves and birch dry leaves again from ammo again from e-models uh, and these are teeny 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 tiny teeny tiny super tiny 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 i'm gonna stop me stop me uh, leaves, little cut out paper leaves, I assume they are. Now these are ideally from 148th down to 132nd scale, but I don't care. These are 124th as far as I'm concerned. They'll, they'll look fine. Uh, and the weird thing is if you shake them around and then put your finger on the top, sometimes they kind of whiz around when you move your finger. You won't see it on camera, but they kind of whizz around. 
Now, I've investigated how to stick these on. We'll talk about that in a bit. So I've got some leaves and they can go on the diorama and the van. And the only other thing you will really need is some PVA glue, white glue, PVA glue, wherever you get it from. I'll cover that name up. Hello. <laughs> yeah, anywhere you get it from, um, it's just white craft glue like you used to get at school in the 70s. Um, and it used to peel off your hands and it was brilliant because you're just peeling off your hands all day. It's just white craft PVA glue and that's going to be useful for sticking things like the leaves down. Uh, and I'm just going to show you how to use just those products to get something that's a bit more interesting than this card, but not so complex that you can't rattle it off in a day or so uh, in time to take your model to a show or wherever you want to put it. If you haven't got a lot of time and you press to make something interesting, this will just look a bit better than sitting on a table really blank and boring. So give this a try. So I'm going to get this unpacked uh, and we will get this started. Give me a moment and we'll crack on. <coughs> Okay, so right, the first step, you can see here, I've gone ahead and painted some brown on here. It doesn't matter what brown you use, it's not really uh, of any importance. Just some brown paint. Uh, didn't go too thick because I wanted some patchiness to show from the image that's underneath it. So I'll just give it one quick thin coat. This is just to be a colour, uniform colour underneath the grass that we're going to have on top. So let's uh, get this going. So the first thing we need to do is put this into our picture frame. Uh, as I say, this is an A5 frame, so rather handily. <laughs> perfect uh, if this line by the way if you're wondering I just drew a bit here and a bit here with the sharpie and then carried on that line across here this is because I needed to know how much to cut off the sheet of stuff the sheet of grass so we're going to mount that in quite a handy little picture frame this put that in there it took me ages to figure out how to get these things off when I first opened this I'm like what? how do I how do I get the what and then I realized oh you just push them okay yeah, it takes me a while to do simple things sometimes. So we now have that mounted in the picture frame. Now what I did was I took that sheet of the uh, ground. I just realized when I was watching it back, by the way, it says bushes, small bushes, not small brushes. So yeah, idiot. So that's that. We now have the grassy stuff. Now what I did was I took that big sheet of grassy stuff and I, those lines I put down, I marked off the shape and size I needed and I trimmed this to fit. It's not a perfect fit, there's some gaps, but we can play with those later with some other tufts and things. Uh, when you're cutting this stuff, do put some paper down because this just sheds everywhere. It's like <laughs> My desk was a mass of small shrubs. So that's been cut to shape and you can see the brown showing through in some areas. Again, as I say there's some bold patches and a bit missing there, but that's fine because we can, we can do something with that. So let us get this on there. Now again, it's going to make a mess. You just peel it off the backing like this, so it's loose, and it comes off as this big mat of stuff. It's like a giant fungus. So you can see now we have this mat of the foliage, so you, that plastic sheet won't show through. So what we need to do is brush all that off there. It's very messy, this is good fun, but it's very messy. Got ourselves some white glue some white PVA and I'm just going to willy nilly, that's a real word, willy nilly I'm going to brush it all. I've got an old brush, it's not a new brush, it's not a brush that I want to last more than this particular job. I'm going to brush this on and if you've ever used PVA or craft glue before, if you're in the US, if you're one of our colonial cousins, you'll know this as possibly Elmer's glue. It's water based it doesn't do anything, it just sticks things together and if you need to, you can pull it apart again. So I'm gonna put that down here. Doesn't matter if it goes on the frame, not fussed, it'll dry clear. And when I said about we've got to spray everything, uh, what I will be doing when I've finished is actually, when I matte varnish the whole thing, I'll matte varnish the frame as well. So it'll be a matte black, because it would look a bit weird with a, with a great big shiny black frame around it, given the dirty, filthy, filthy, dirty, dirty, filthy nature of it. Okay, so we've got loads of white glue down. Put the brush somewhere it's not going to stick to everything. And then all we need to do is plonk this down. Get that on there, give it a good squish. And that white glue takes a little while to set. You might need to leave it an hour or so before it's fully set. It will dry clear so you're not going to see it, which is why it doesn't matter if you go on the frame. Give it a good squish down. 
Let's get my hand behind it, and then I can push better, can't I? And that is now on. Dee, 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 dee. So we have our first layer of some grassy goodness. And again, the reason I put that brown down was because you'll see brown through there. And what we'll do later is there are some things we're going to use that I didn't mention in the in the introduction bit because I realise I'll need them later on. So that's that there. Now the next step is to add some more variation. You can see I've started here. What I've got is some a sheet of tufts, grassy tufts. Now these are actually of a make not currently stocked by e-models, uh, but they do have lots of other options in stock. So go and have a look for all the little add-ons for terrain. These are just the only ones I happen to have, and I wasn't originally going to use these, but these little bulb patches have suggested that I put something there. So these are actually self-adhesive. You pull them off the sheet, and then you just plonk them down. You can, if you want, put some white PVA on there as well, just to give them some extra stick. But you don't need to, because they're pretty clingy, and they're pretty self-adhesive. So we're just going to pad out some of the little gaps. Get them off the sheet there. I feel really cruel because it's like pulling a little tiny caterpillar off or something. So we're going to pop them in there, let them stick down for a bit and then just tussle them and they'll, they'll go a bit, that one's not sticking, stick. Okay, well if it doesn't want to stick, that's easily fixed. Get ourselves a small brush, and it will have some white PVA treatment. You can glue them down if you need to. There, stuck now, haha, <laughs> going nowhere, going nowhere. And then just work your way around. As I said, there are plenty of other sort of, there are plenty of makes of this stuff available. It's always fun to go and have a look at, get off, have a look at diorama type stuff and terrain. Ow, get off. Really wants to, I've got a caterpillar on me, I'm not, hello. I'm calling it Bob. Yeah, it's always fun to go and have a mooch around uh, your models diorama section see what they've got they've got loads of stuff they've got all things like this like you know plant life and trees and things and they've also got lots of bits of fencing and things like that that you can use so go and have a look and see what you can come up with as i say i wasn't planning on using these which is why i was reluctant to do so because these particular ones you can't get from your models but there are plenty of others available so I'll just plant that there and it just gives you a little bit of grass sticking out from the edge so you don't have this nice straight edge where I've painted it and it, it, there's a bit of variation what I might do is be really funny and just grab one and plonk it there as if it's growing between the flags and what I might do is just tease those out a bit to between the flags I might put some here and there across the flags as well because go and have a look at flags on the driveway they're all over the place things grow out of all the little crooks and nannies we had our driveway done a few years ago and they said, yeah, we put this special stuff down so weeds won't grow between the flags. Yeah, weeds grow between the flags, trust me. Weeds come from everywhere to grow on our path. Okay, right, the next thing to do, one last thing to do on here, and that is uh, to add some dust and dirt. Now, I forgot to mention this, but we're gonna use some uh, ammo of MIG Dark Earth, a MIG 3007. And if you know me, you know I love this stuff because it looks just like kind of soil. It's great. Uh, now, you could just plonk this down and use Pigment Fixer, but what I'm going to do is something a bit different. I want to keep its Earth-like qualities. So, what I'm going to do is, first of all, plan I'm going to do this. I'm going to get some on a brush, and I'm just going to touch it in to places where there's gaps. Like down here. Have I got any more gaps? I've got one little gap there. Uh, maybe around the back here somewhere. Now it's going on the frame, but that's not the end of the world. Put some down at this end. And what I'll do as well, I'll sprinkle some around the front here. Just a little bit. Just to give that kind of difference between the grass and the flagstones. Okay, so that's gonna do. Don't use a good brush for that, by the way. Use an old crappy brush, because again, like PVA glue, pigments really knacker your brushes. Now, what I've done is I've taken some PVA glue and I've watered it down. So it's just PVA glue and water. And what I want to do here is just really drop some water over it to seal it in place. Now, it will dissolve it away a big chunk of it it will kind of go away but that's fine it's not the end of the world 
remember the whole thing about nature is nature is completely random now this stuff will dry clear and it will dry slightly glossy but again that doesn't matter because what will happen is that when we finish this we'll do a matte varnish over all of it and that will hide that slight shininess so what I'll do is I'll just fade that in a little there I'll put some down this end now a lot of this powder will come back off again but where it's been moistened with the PVA the thinned PVA hopefully what it will do is just hold that in place and it'll probably just become more like a shade than an actual textured thing so that's on there what I need to do now is just ruffle it ever so slightly let me find a brush that I'm willing to sacrifice that one I'll do so what I need to do now is just ruffle the grass that's under there because I don't want the grass to dry particularly all flowing with the the PVA it'll all point in the same direction so I just need to tousle the grass a little bit just to break it up and what I'm also doing as well is kind of spreading the the powder okay and the last little thing we need to do as you can see it came out quite dark and squingy around here and mungy and horrible like it's muddy so what we need to do is just bring back that kind of tously grass effect and all we need to do is go and put some more of these little things on now they may not st if the self-adhesive ones that you're using they may not stick straight away because obviously this is still a little bit wet down here I've given it a blast with the hairdryer so I can do this bit but they'll stick eventually because they're, they're trying to stick to the wet white glue Ooh, I don't know if you can get off my tweezers yeah get off so we just need to go back in and put some more of these in just a few just here and there just to bring back that grass effect not everywhere but millions of them just a few here and there especially around the edge because it does tend to mat the the tufts down I mean you could do that that bit with the powders first and it would be absolutely fine but I'm kind of winging it here and I didn't think about that so there you go so you just get this nice little change between that grass and the brown and it's kind of brown there I'm feeling the need I'm feeling the need to do some more here between the between the tiles there we go there we go he's happy there he wants to live there he likes living between the tiles it's where weeds need to go he's a happy little weed there we go you can do as much or as little as you like sometimes doing less is actually much better and looks much better if I just did a few of these it might have more of an effect than doing loads of them so you never know but yeah get yourself some different colored tufts and things like that they're great fun and you can do a lot with them so I shall leave this to dry fully when we come back we'll do the last few bits on the van and then we are basically done so I'll go and let this sort itself out when we come back we'll do that back in a moment okay I completely lied there is one more bit to do and I totally forgot I have to do the leaves rule of thumb if you've got a little pot of leaves like this for the love of dog don't sneeze or breathe on them because they will go everywhere trust me on this now what we need to do is we need to get some of these leaves on the diorama and I'm going to be putting some on the van as well and um, just to suggest obviously well fall on leaves so all we're going to do take our leaves and we're going to now this is really really tricky and not easy at all that's don't even know where that's just there it is they ping off everywhere now what I'm going to do is pretty much, oh that went back in the pot, they do ping around, I think these are made of paper, I'm not really sure and I'm having to be really careful because I'm talking but every time I say something I risk blowing these off across the mat. So what I want to do is just sprinkle some on, the diorama I'm just going to put a few, I'm not going to put lots in, I'm just going to put, so you see how they're blowing around just because I'm talking. It's really hard, I'm having to keep my head far enough away because every time I do a P or a B, they blow off across the diorama. Um, so we're going to just put these down. I'm going to use these ones and not the other ones because these are bigger and a bit more manageable. The other ones are so tiny, I'm going to struggle with those. So I'm just going to put a few down, not a lot, just a few, just to give it an effect. And I'll save some more for the van. Now what I'm going to do before I go anywhere is put the lid back on here because of the reasons which I shouldn't need to explain. <laughs> yeah. 
This is where, I'm not sure if this is going to work, but we're going to give it a try. What I'm going to do is try and fix them in place with white PVA. And what I've got like before is just white PVA glue thinned in some water. Some water. Quite thin. And initially what I'm going to do is just try dropping these on the leaves. And they're just going to pick them up. <laughs> yeah, I wondered if that might be the case. So, I've not tried this yet. This is breaking news, folks. So I'm going to try dropping them in more water, with more water down. Oh, this is tricky. Oh, sticking to me brush. Get off. Now, I did try putting some down and just spraying some matte varnish on a piece of test plastic. Big problem with that was the spray just blasted them off across the horizon and they disappeared. So what I'm trying to do is just get these in place with a little bit of white glue. Thin enough that when it dries, it'll dry clear obviously, but when it dries, it won't dry as a, a lump of glue. There won't be a visible, or hopefully not too much of a visible bulge where the glue is. I just want enough to hold them in place so that when I matte varnish, they won't blow around everywhere and the matte varnish will finally seal them in place. Obviously you can see the change in colour but that's fine, they're going to go back when they dry out. Now this would be more tricky on the actual model on the van as I knock the camera. Get off! Get off! Because obviously I don't want to mess up the paint job. So we'll leave those, they're all locked in place now with a little bit of the white glue. So I did try spraying glue on, I can brush it around a bit to flatten it out, that's going to help it fade away. Uh, but like here I've got this one held in with white glue, but I'm not doing the stalk because I want to leave the stalk so it sticks up a little bit. Oh there's one over here, hello. What are you doing over here? Oh there's one on my tweezers as well. Yeah. I did try and figure out how, uh, try and think of ways to do this actually. I'm sure there is a really easy way to do this that I haven't thought of yet, and it's probably really obvious. But hey, what are you going to do? So there you go, we've got some very tiny amounts of leaf litter. Just a few bits and bobs, I don't want to put loads on. Just a few little bits and bobs of leaf litter, it's just enough to catch the eye when you see the diorama. Because you're only going to see about this much of the diorama, the rest will have the van on it, so. It's just enough to catch the eye. So I'll go off and see if I can figure out how to get some on the van. Uh, and then when we come back, um, I will show you the last few bits. Uh, that we're going to add to the diorama and then that's it well actually no, I'll show you now actually uh, I found I have three little things I have and spanner Ooh, it's not even on shot I have and spanner and rubber mallet and a piece de resistance and trolley jack yeah uh, these are from the Italeri 124 truck stop accessories kit I think it's called it's basically all sort of things like, um, no, got it wrong. No, totally, completely wrong. These are from the Tamiya 124th uh, Rally Maintenance Crew Set. God, I've been using different things for different things and it gets very confusing. These are from Tamiya's 124th Rally Maintenance Set. You get trolley jack and you get the mallets and spanners. You also get toolkits and little laptops and things for diagnostics. But all I wanted to use in this was the mallet, the spanner and the trolley jack. I'm trying to suggest that the guy that's selling it is kind of an idiot. So he's basically trying to... He's got a trolley jack. I mean, bless him, he's got a trolley jack, so he knows how to jack his car up properly. <laughs> mm. um, but he's trying to take a wheel off with a spanner and a rubber mallet. He obviously hasn't got a wheel brace or anything like that. Hello. So we're going to keep it simple. So I've just got these little three accessories, uh, but they were just painted with standard Tamiya colours. Uh, and those are the other accessories, so we'll be adding those in and there is also of course which you may have seen before and I can't remember if I showed it in this video I'll just get the dust off it there is also of course at 124th scale me that uh, has been painted up and now this isn't going to be permanently with this model this is staying with me but I'll put him in the final thing just so you can see it just for fun because this gives some character to it and there is one last thing to do to the van so let me go and put the leaves on the van I'll show you the last thing we need to do to the van and then we're done back in a moment Okay, now the very last step. Now I'm nervous about this because if it goes wrong, it messes the whole thing up. I can see I've stuck some leaves on the front of the van here. I uh, used a slightly different technique for these because I didn't want to get lots of glue everywhere. 
it's all going to be shiny because I can't matte varnish this now with the windscreen and everything. So what I did was I got the leaf, I did leaf by leaf, individual leaves. I got each leaf, grabbed it as best I could in the tweezers and just dipped it into the white glue and placed it on. And then what I did was if it was a little bit loose looking, I just touched it with the brush with some glue on it and then got the glue off the brush, made it dry and then just wicked the excess away with the brush so it didn't leave a big curly thing. I'm blowing on it now, apart from one that just moved because I forgot to glue it down. They're all stuck on. So, there's one last step to do. Oh, I used some of the little tiny leaves as well. Some of the round birch leaves, I guess. I don't know. I put some of those in the diorama as well. There's one last step to do. <sighs> this is the bit I'm nervous about. I'm going to use my Uniposca White 1M, PC1M, White Uniposca pen. And I'm quite simply going to do this. Well, first thing I'm going to do is get the dust off the windscreen because it's a bit dusty. If you want to know the best way to dust your models, by the way, once you finish them, get yourself a fan brush like this, they're really good. So, wish me luck, here we go. Uniposca pen. Done. 250 quid or nearest offer. I never had to write on clear plastic before, probably never have to do it again. That is it, that is the last thing I need to do with this fan. You can see by the way, I forgot to mention I've stuck the wheel, the wipers and the, the mirrors on. Um, the wipers and the mirrors were just painted in, to me, a rubber black. Uh, the mirrors in the end, I just went for a silver paint effect. It won't really come out camera because it's not really there, but it's um, silver paint, it's chrome silver, to me a chrome silver, and then a couple of coats of gloss varnish over the top. But this makes the final touch on our van. So what I need to do, is give that five or ten minutes just to dry god that was nerve-wracking you know when you're doing the last thing on a model and you put all the work into it and there's one thing you need to do and it's a freehand thing and if you screw it up the whole model is ruined because if that hadn't worked yeah you wouldn't be watching this so oh, i'll go and get this all set up we'll get the diorama set up and we'll get the spinny thing out and we'll wrap this puppy up so i'm dead nervous look at this because oh. my handwriting is not the best I can't do eights. I always do eights and fives. They just look terrible. So, yeah, I mean, that's not a great five, but it'll do. So, <laughs> right, I'll go and have a cup of coffee. I'll let that dry, and then we'll get it on the spinny thing. Back in a moment. And we are done. You can see here it's been mounted onto the diorama and onto the spinny thing of spinning. And uh, I'm really pleased with how this has come out. It's come out brilliant. I hope you see now... Um, how even just a simple, simple diorama can make a massive difference to your model. Obviously, if you're, like, you're taking this to a show and you've plonked it on the table, it would look good. But a couple of hours, it's probably all I spent building this simple diorama with a cheap frame, and the uh, coastal card and some bits and bobs, and it looks a million times better. Uh, it gives a context to your build, it gives a story to your build. And the story here is obviously, whoever owns this van is idiot. He's trying to flog it for 250 quid and he thinks changing the tires will just make it much more valuable and attractive to a buyer i come along and i'm an idiot so of course i see this i see the sharp mouth and think yeah i'll buy that Ooh, and i'm all excited with my hands up uh, because there's a shark mouth and as i've said many times in the past shark mouths make everything better now i did take some advice from one of our followers who when i was saying about not having a tire on the passenger wheel at the front he did say you don't take the tire off the wheel without taking the whole wheel as well i'm like oh yeah good point so I put the tyre back on and slashed it at the bottom so it looks like he's not yet taken the tyre off. There's the new tyre to go on. The comedy being, of course, he's an idiot. He hasn't figured out that you can't just pop the tyre off the old wheel and put the new one on. So he'd probably get that far and have to take it somewhere to get it done properly because it's special. For some reason he's got a tyre with no wheel in it. I don't know. These are, he went to some really dodgy tyre place. It doesn't really matter too much. That's the beauty of, uh, of your model and adding a diorama. The diorama can put a whole backstory in there and you can make up whatever story you want. It's just fun, it's silly fun. Uh, but I am really pleased with the way this came out. Um, it's a really, really nice little kit. If you're in the middle of, if you're in between say two big builds or you've just finished a big massive build and you're a little bit burnt out and you just want something simple, something that you can do in a few days, um, give this a try. Obviously it takes me longer because I'm filming it, but it wouldn't be inconceivable like the bank holiday just passed now, four day weekend, you could have rattled this off in four days. It's lots of very quick processes. Obviously all paints take a little longer to dry, but 
I hope now you can see that that uh, making a, a good looking and interesting build doesn't have to be super complicated or super daunting for a beginner or super scary. You can come up with good results, you can do it quick and you can do it cheaply. So if you're thinking about getting this kit, give it a whirl. It's a great palette cleanser if you're used to more complicated builds. As I said, I've had no real major issues with the kit at all. Aside from the ones I've mentioned, you know, throughout the build, the tabs on the clear parts, uh, make sure you put the, the chassis in first and then the bumpers, otherwise you're knackered because of the tabs. And make sure you put the headlights in the grill first before you insert the grill because you can't really push once the grill is in there and you've had to snip the tabs off and glue them in, like I said. So this is now going to get put in my cabinet for a little while. It will be wending its way to uh, the chaps at eModels to go in their display cabinet. What I'll probably do is when I've finished the Eagle Transporter, I'll take that, this and the Striker. If you remember I made the, uh, the Trumpeter Striker about two years ago, that needs to go back to them. So I'll be making that as well, taking that down as well. They'll all go down and then next time you pop in, if you do pop into eModels, if you're, if you're in the area, you can pop in and say, can I have a look at the transit van? Which is probably unlikely because you'll be more likely to say, can I have a look at that enormous Eagle Transporter please? Because that's awesome. He says, not even having started building it yet. Um, but that's going to do it for this build. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you've learned something. I hope you've had fun watching. I hope you've learned some, some interesting little tips and techniques. The one most important thing I want to tell you is, have fun with it. Make up a story. If you're doing something like this, it's got character and a, a story to it. Just make up whatever story you want. It doesn't matter. There's no rules. You know, there's no hard and fast rules about any of this. Just have fun. Do something silly. Um, but yes, if you are building along, have fun with it. If you're not, if you're thinking about it, pick it up. It's a cheap little kit. It's great fun, and it's begging to be weathered because trust me, post 1987, 1988, you would never have seen a clean transit Mark II. They're all just sheds. After about 1986, 87, they just there's like a button inside you press it and they just turn into sheds. <coughs> that's that's how transits were in those days. But it just remains for me to say thank you for watching, as I've said about four times now, because I'm doing the end of video waffle. As always, this was a bill for emodels.co.uk. So do go along to the website, um, have a look, pick this up or pick up something else, have a look around. Uh, there's tons of stuff in stock. It's a great store. They're really nice guys. They'll look after you. Um, there's so much that you can choose from in there. There's kits like this, there's boats, there's planes, there's egg planes. There's all kinds of crazy stuff. They do RC as well, if you're into RC models. Um, and all the kit and materials you'll need. I always say, if they haven't got it, you don't need it. Uh, if there is something you do particularly want that exact thing of, and they haven't got it, just drop them a line, drop them an email, use the contact form on the website. If it's something they don't currently stock, they can look into it for you. They're more than happy to see if they can get something for you. But if there is, you know, if there's something you're looking for and it's not there, they'll have lots of other alternatives that are just as good. But if you need that particular thing, just give them a shout and ask them if they can get hold of it for you. Do remember to go along to their Facebook page as well, facebook.com forward slash eModelsLTD. It's a great group of people. Uh, it's where all sort of the builders go along. They show off all their stuff. Everybody gets feedback from everybody else. And it's also the best place to stay up to date with what's coming into stock, what they've got new in stock, when things will be back available again, if they're out of stock, you know, if they're sold out. Uh, and also special offers and promotions and things like that. And it's also where you'll find out uh, when Ted and I are doing the weekly eModels live stream on the YouTubes. It's pretty much Monday, nine o'clock every week. Um, but they'll keep you the loop. If you do miss the live stream, it'll be posted up on there anyway and on the YouTube channel. Stay tuned for the Eagle Transporter. Um, it's going to be a, a few weeks yet because I've got some other bits I need to do first and then I can clear my desk and just settle down with the Eagle because that's going to take up my whole desk and it's going to be, I want to work on that and nothing else. So I've got to clear a little bit of backlog stuff out of the way so then I can just dedicate my workbench because once that's filling up my workbench, I can't tidy it back in the box to do something else. So it's going to be just dedicated to the Eagle. And, and, you know how allergic I am to lighting. There may, there may, I'm not promising, there may be lighting, possibly. Don't get too excited, it might not happen. Anyway, I've been waffling now for what? Seven minutes. I really need to work on saying less things. Take care of yourselves, go make something awesome, go be awesome, and until next time, adios amigos.